With Star-Lord Jane Foster and a god killer joining Thor Love and Thunder, is Odinson going to be outnumbered? I can't do this. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't have come. On this IMD Brief, we break down how Chris Pratt, Natalie Portman, and Christian Bale fit into the new film and everything else you'll need to know before seeing Thor Love and Thunder. A fourth Thor movie is in the works from co-writer, director, and Ragnarok Helmer, Taika Waititi, with Chris Hemsworth naturally returning as the God of Thunder, and Natalie Portman rejoining the MCU as Jane Foster, Thor's love interest, a character she hasn't played since 2013's The Dark World. He's not I'm, interested. I'm interested. I'm not interested. Time for you to go now. Okay. Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige convinced Portman to meet with Waititi about the part, and the filmmaker may have swayed her decision by promising that Jane would be deemed worthy in the new film, i.e. she'll be able to wield Thor's hammer Molnir and harness his cosmic powers. Writer Jason Aaron and illustrator Russell Dodderman have spun a similar yarn in the Thor comic book since 2014 beginning when Thor became unworthy and Foster took on the hammer to fight off an invasion of frost giants on Earth. Run back home, little princess. Dad. Next. It gets wild from here and may contain some MCU spoilers as Waititi and Feige have both praised Aaron and Dodderman's work. Jane Foster is revealed as the new Thor, Doctor Doom walls off the multiverse and creates his own planet called Battleworld, where he rules as a god, Doctor Strange is his judge as Sheriff Strange, and an entire team of Thors police the planet, all of which is very much possible in the MCU after the upcoming Doctor Strange sequel introduces the Multiverse of Madness. Plus, Doctor Doom is rumored to appear in Black Panther 2, and Doom will almost certainly factor into the announced Fantastic Four reboot. If this world must die so that mine may live, so be it. Jane Foster is among that force of Thors, as are Thunderer Thorleaf, who holds a record for arresting 13 hulks in a single night. He's a friend from work! Throg, a frog named Puddlegump, who found a sliver of Molnir and became a green god of thunder. Laugh or drop in shock? Ow! 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 Ribbit. And the somehow even weirder Beta Ray Bill, a horse-faced Corbinite who has actually been around the Marvel comics since 1983 and would make the wildest addition to an MCU that already includes a kleptomaniac raccoon and a tree with teen angst. I am Guru. When Christian Bale was first added to this cast, it was assumed he'd play Beta Ray Bill, but Feige countered that he'd be Gore the God Butcher a vengeful alien who is on the warpath to kill every god in the universe after his prayers to save his family were unanswered. All will suffer. All will burn. Oh, that's intense. Gore could send Thor spiraling back into the depression caused by losing Jane and failing to stop Thanos' snap. But luckily, he'll have Star-Lord by his side to get him through the hard times. Chris Pratt let it slip that he'll shoot Love and Thunder in Australia during a chat with the King of Spoilers and Spider-Man himself, Tom Holland. I feel like no one knew that, bro. No, they knew that. They knew that. I think they knew that. No, they knew that. If they didn't, they know now. Oh, well, they know now. <laughs> As for the love half of the title, Clearly the return of Jane Foster will give Thor the feels, but Ragnarok and in-game star Tessa Thompson has also announced that her character Valkyrie will return to search for her queen. Do I know you? I, I feel like I've known you. I feel like I know you too. It's weird. And if Beta Ray Bill finally gets his five minutes of MCU fame, beyond what may have been his enormous bust in Ragnarok, we hope that old Horseface will also be on the quest for romance. You have my sympathy because it will not be me! For more trending tales of love and thunder, stay tuned to imdb.com slash imdbrief.